I believe I was born with two talents. The ability to draw really cool looking dragons with pencils on paper. I've always been able to do that. I, I never really had to practice, never learned it from anyone. I, I could just always do it as long as I could remember. Still can. And second, the ability to develop new talents through hard work and an investment of time. And that second one might not sound like much of a talent because technically anybody can do that. Everybody has the capacity to de dedicate their time and their effort to whatever it is they choose to do. But you'll notice not everybody does. So throughout my life, th there have been a number of things I, I wanted to, to learn and to develop a certain level of mastery over. And like I said, I was only born with those two talents, being able to draw dragons and <laughs> being able to, to learn new talents. Okay, Everything else, honestly, I, I wasn't that good at it. All right. So one thing I wanted to do, I wanted to learn how to dance. And when, when I was 21, I, I had this really life-changing experience. I ended up in, in the hospital, had all these surgeries, and uh, I'll tell that story another time, but it was, uh, it was life-changing. It was shocking. It made me realize life is too short not to do the things that you really want to do. And I wanted to learn how to dance, you know, like performance art dancing, um, ballet, contemporary dance, modern. And most of my life I, I put it off because I thought, oh, I, I'm not any good at that. I'm too old. I'm too old now because, you know, dancers, they start when they're little. Most of them do. And I, I'm too old now. I'm not flexible. I'm not athletic. I'm, 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 I'll trip over my own feet. And in fact, in, in my very first dance class, I did exactly that. I tripped over my own feet trying to just walk in a square on the floor, something so simple a child could do it, I tripped over my own feet. And I suppose a lot of people might have been tempted to quit at that point, but I, again, my second talent, the ability to learn new talents. So I put my mind to it and I decided, no, I, I didn't come here to fail. So I picked myself up off the ground and I kept doing it, and I embarrassed myself who knows how many times, and I looked like a, I don't know, some sort of prancing elephant or something like that trying to, trying to do ballet, I kid you not. And, um, but I stuck with it day after day, hour after hour, week after week, month after month, year after year, and it, eventually I, I auditioned for uh, uh, the, the degree, Sorry, I can't talk. The degree, because you, you had to audition to get into the, the program at my university. And I was up against uh, all these girls, most, mostly girls, because uh, it's, it's a female-dominated uh, major, dance. Um, and uh, all, of, all these girls, and, and uh, a few guys as well, and all of them had been dancing since a very young age. And... You know, I started in my 20s. But you know who else started in their 20s at age uh, 22, just like me? Martha Graham, one of the founders of the modern dance movement, one of the pioneers of modern dance, started when uh, she was 22, just like me. And I, I, I love that story because, you know, it, you know throughout, uh, throughout career and th throughout college and my, my dancing career, um, you know, that, that kind of gave me strength, like, you know what? She did it, and she was one of the greats. You know, I may not be one of the greats, but I can do it. So I did. And I, I got the degree. I, I even went so far as to, to perform professionally, to dance with a couple of uh, a ballet companies, semi-pro uh, companies. And I made a paycheck, a, a paycheck off of dancing ballet. You know, I, I did the, you know, the pas de da and the, the nutcracker and all that fun stuff. And, um, you know, it was a, it was a fantastic experience. I'm, I'm so glad, so glad 
that I had that experience of falling, falling on my face and tripping over my own feet on day one, because if it wasn't for that, I, I would not have developed the strength that I gained from picking myself off up the floor and telling myself, do it again, do it again. And this is the exact same method I've used to develop any other talent that I have. I remember when I was 18 in college, uh, I had this roommate and he, he played the guitar really well. He played these country western love songs and all the girls on the block just loved him. And they'd all gather around, listen to him play his guitar and be like, oh, you're so good. And, uh, you know, he, he got all the ladies and I was like, oh, man, I want that. Why not me? I want to learn how to play the guitar, get all the girls. <laughs> and, um, and so I, I got this old guitar. Um, and it was strung wrong. I didn't realize it was, it was a classical guitar strung with uh, phosphor bronze strings or steel strings. Some people call it that. Um, you know, the metal ones. And the, the, um, the action on a classical guitar is much, much higher, so it's much harder to press a steel string down. And so it cut into my fingertips and it made them bleed. I bled from the fingertips over and over again. I thought, oh man, playing the guitar is so hard. And um, j just so you know, playing the guitar should not be that hard, <laughs> okay? So um, use the right type of strings on, on the uh, appropriate type of guitar. And if you don't know which is which, you know, use the internet. The internet wasn't as advanced as, as it is now back when I was 18. So I had, I had no idea. But I practiced every day until uh, my fingers bled, literally which took about five minutes. So I, I would practice five minutes a day on, on that thing, just trying to figure out these chords. And, and every day I would do just a little bit more. But, you know, actually it didn't start that way. Uh, my older brother, he's seven years older than me, my older brother Joseph, he, uh, he, he sat me down one day and he said, Ramsey, you need, you need to, to make some goals because I guess he saw me as an unambitious kid. And he said, all right, here's a piece of paper, here's a pen. Write down a goal. I said, oh, I don't know. I want to learn how to play the guitar. And he said, all right, write it down. So I said, okay. And I wrote at the top, learn to play the guitar. And he said, all right, now, that's not good enough. You need to tell me how you are going to learn how to play the guitar. And I said, um, I don't know, practice? And he said, okay. For how long? And I said, um, I don't know, five minutes a day. That's, that was the limit of how long I could press those, those horrible strings down. He said, all right, how often? Uh, every day, I said. He said, all right, write that down. Play the guitar, practice five minutes every single day. So I wrote that down. He said, all right, hang that above your bed where you will see it every single night before you go to bed, and every single morning when you wake up. So I did. And every mo morning I woke up and I saw this, learn to play the, the guitar by practicing four or five minutes every day. And every night before I went to bed, I read it again, learn to play the guitar by practicing five minutes every single day. And so, the guitar was right there. I would pick it up and I would play five minutes and uh, shake out my fingers and they were bleeding or blistered. Or eventually I, I, I grew some calluses, but man, it took a while. And then I put it down and go do something else. And, but I do it every single day. And then there came a point where my fingers got so calloused, you know, I, I found I could play a little bit longer and it was actually kind of fun when it didn't hurt so much. And so I learned some chords and I, I practiced a song and I, I started writing some songs and uh, I, I started developing an aptitude with it. And I thought, wow, this, this is a lot more enjoyable than I thought it would be. And, and uh, I can do this now. I'm not just toying with it. I'm, I'm playing it. I'm making some music. And, and I went out, got some friends together, and we started a band. And, and we wrote a bunch of songs. And we, we uh, played at a bunch of different venues. And it was fantastic. Great life experience I'd recommend to anybody. But if it was not for that simple process of Establishing a goal, writing it down, 
and determining how am I going to accomplish that goal and keeping it ever present in my mind by keeping it visible. It wouldn't have happened. Right? If, if we want to make something happen, we need to, we need to vocalize it with our voice, with our writing pen on paper, with our actions. You need to put it into practice as much as possible and keep it ever present in the mind as much as possible. And make sure that you have an achievable step, a realistic achievable step, something you can do every single day to accomplish that goal. I read this book uh, a number of years ago. I, I don't remember what it was called. It was something like How to Sell Your Book. I picked it up off a library shelf and I thought, oh, I'm not writing a book, but uh, I'm interested in, in the idea of how to sell something to somebody. And I picked it up and the only thing I really remember from this 300 page book was the idea that every single day, if you have something that you're excited about and you want to share with people and you want to, you want to get other people excited about, every single day, find somebody new to tell about that thing. So if you're trying to sell a book every single day, tell somebody new about your book. Uh, and it didn't say go out and tell 100,000 people or share it on social media because that didn't exist back then. But it said every single day, take the personal initiative to share your book or your idea or your screenplay or script or whatever it is you're writing with somebody new. And I, I wasn't writing a book, but, but I've used that, that same method with a lot of different things that I've been excited about. Like when I moved here to China and I opened up the, the very first MMA gym in, in Shanghai um, way back when, uh, it, it was a tough time because nobody, nobody in China, well, a very, very few people, but almost nobody knew what MMA was. Uh, combat sports were not particularly popular. And, and that surprises a lot of uh, Americans to hear, like, what, didn't they invent martial arts in China? Well, kind of, but mm, the current generation of Chinese don't really care about it that much. But, you know, in the last seven years or so, it's, it's become more popular and well-known, and they've... they've They've uh, developed the sport quite a bit here. I mean, there's still a huge, long, long way to go. But I found, you know, the, the only way I'm ever going to get a gym off the ground and have any success teaching this sport, which is basically completely unknown here, is by talking to people about it every single day. And, and most of us, we, we never get outside of our clique of, of about 7 to 12 people. And you might think, well, well I've got 7,000 Facebook friends, or I've got a billion followers on Instagram or YouTube or whatever it is. Um, I'm talking about real people that we have face-to-face -face contact with. The average person will only ever really closely associate with 7 to 12 people, and rarely any more than that. I, mean, we're, it's, I think it goes back to just simple tribal instincts. We, we want to have that very close-knit clan um, so most of us outside of social media contact, internet contact, never meet new people outside that very, very limited circle. But if you want to have a life changing experience, step outside your circle, meet more than 12 people, have a close personal contact with another person, a new person every single day, at least one. So from age 19 to 21, I was a, a Mormon missionary. And I went to Buenos Aires, Argentina. And uh, if, if you don't know what the, the Mormon missionaries do, they, we basically go um, door to door and knock on the doors and tell people about our church and, and uh, invite them to, to learn um, about our church. And, and, uh, and uh, if, if uh, they're interested, join, join the church, get baptized, and, and, and so on. And one thing I got out of that experience, I mean, I got a lot of things out of that experience, obviously, but one dramatic learning experience I had was putting myself out there enough to talk to new people every single day. In fact, I talked to hundreds, hundreds of new people. I had so many conversations, and it was mind-boggling. Every single time I saw a stranger, I would walk up to them, and I would talk to them. 
And I wouldn't just talk to them. I mean, I would talk to them about the thing that was quite literally the most sacred thing to me that I could think of, you know, my, my religion, my, my, my faith in God. And if, if you want to learn something about yourself, go out there and do that. Even if you don't have a religion that you follow, even if you're an atheist or whatever it is, uh, think about whatever is most important to you, most sacred to you. And have a conversation about that with somebody new every single day, at least once. And it is going to just expand your mind in all kinds of new ways. And you're going to develop talents you didn't even know existed. And intrapersonal communication, that's, that's just the, the very first layer. But, man, I'll tell you, you will learn something from every single person out there. Every single person, no matter how smart, how stupid, how big, how little wherever, everyone has something to teach you. Everybody has a book filled with information. And if, if, if you go out there with that attitude, that everybody has something to teach you, even, even horrible, awful people have something to teach you, believe me, they do, um, you will be better for it.